I used to cut all my copes with a coping saw just like this. No matter what I was cutting, crown molding, baseboard, didn't matter. And now today, I only use this saw when I'm coping base shoe or something. Something really small that I don't want to have to carry a corded tool around. I can just use a little coping saw. These days, I use a jigsaw with a coping foot, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But you can see how easy it is to actually use a little hand coping saw like this, all you have to do is keep your hand moving. Keep your arm moving like it's a machine and don't push on the blade. Just kind of think the blade ahead. Don't try and steer it so much, just will it in the direction you want to go in and it'll follow that direction as long as you just keep your arm moving. But there's a much faster and much easier way. You can see what I mean when I say it's faster and easier. This is a Collins coping foot on a Festool Tryon jigsaw, and this is the slickest way I know of to cope baseboard and crown molding and chair railing too. Now you probably were watching what I was doing. Let's look at it again kind of closely here so I can describe exactly the moves I was making so that you can do it yourself. It's a very easy tool to use and it's not that dangerous. It may look kind of scary, but it really isn't if you control it properly and that's what this is all about. Finish work and working safely is all about controlling your tools properly. So when I'm using this one, I, have, I use it in two positions. This is the push position where I'm pushing the blade into the material away from me. I have my thumb behind the guard on the coping foot. I have my fingers on top of the molding and when I make my cut into the molding I tip the motor down and then I rock the tool up just like you would a sawzall or something but with a lot more precision and as I'm going into the fillet here which is usually fairly high so you have to get in pretty deep I slide my thumb back across the top of the guard here so that my thumb continues to stay in contact with the tool so I have two hands touching the tool not just one 
I've got the hand that I'm holding the tool in, and I've got my other hand touching it and steadying it while my other fingers are on top of the molding. This way you know exactly where your fingers are and you don't have to go looking for one later on on the floor. Now, the other move here, the other position that you hold this in, is the pull position. You turn the tool around. So, look, this is the push position with my thumb behind the guard. The pull position, just turn the tool around 180 degrees and pull it toward you. That's the position I was holding it in when I made this cut up at the top. And it's also the position I made, I, also the position I used when I finished the cut coming down from the top. You'll also notice that this top cut on here isn't paper thin like that first one I cut with a little coping saw. This is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. This is something I do now that I didn't used to do. I do it now because I got sick and tired of that teeny little thin piece, that piece that's almost as thick as the paint, snapping off as I was carrying it to the corner where it gets installed. It either brushes against your shirt or it touches the wall too soon and boom, it's gone. So why to go to all the trouble to cut that? So here I'm making it a little bit thicker, and I just make a notch in the preceding piece. Just a little tiny notch with my utility knife so that it'll drop down into that notch. I'll show you that in a little bit when we get deeper into the photographs on the article. But let's make a few more cope cuts with this saw so you can see exactly how to use it yourself. Here's the first piece we cut. There's that measurement mark I'm going to make that butt cut at. Um, and here's the little cope on that little short piece, so I'll clamp this one down. And I like to make that little overlapping miter first, so I'm going to cut that right away. I'm just going to rock the tool up into the molding. And now I'm going to come down here and do the same thing. I'm going to rock the tool up right into these two fillets. Here's the second fillet. Now I can come up and make these two straight cuts. Put my thumb behind the guard. Put the blade at a little bit of an angle. Tip the motor down. And then lift the motor up to make my cut. I'm going to do this slowly so you can see me back my thumb up. I come right up to the molding. Right up to the previous turf. That's why it's so important to make those turf cuts first for the waste to fall away. Now I'm just going to make a little bit of a cut right here. I can't get around that OG all the way, but it's nice to cut part of it from that direction, then come back from up here. Now watch, I'm in the pull position. I'm pulling the saw toward me. My thumb on my left hand is touching the molding to steady it. My finger on my left hand is touching a little lever down here just to help me steady the tool. I'm going to take the blade I'm going to get it underneath that little overlapping miter and I'm going to rub it gently against that OG until it comes right up against the paint line and I'm just going to rock it real gently to cut out that waste. See, that can all be done in one move. Let's look at that one more time. And this time Remember, we got to cut this one again on the miter saw. I'm going to set it over here. Let's do this next one. We got to cut it again on the miter saw too. Remember, this is the one that gets that outside corner on it, and it's marked at 43 degrees. Let's do that one this time. Let's clamp that down. I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing in the pull position. I'm going to rock the tool up. And leave that overlapping miter about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Right up to the paint line. And now in the same position, I'm going to come in and make two relief cuts at these two fillets. Now if you wanted to, there's all kinds of ways to skin a cat. You can make a couple of relief cuts right into this OG right now, too, while you're in the pull position. You can even come all the way down and almost finish that OG by using the jigsaw blade like a magic wand. Just 
rock it back and forth, and you can just clean this little OG out right now while you're in the pole position. Nice and neat and clean. Then you can turn the tool around and finish it in the push position. Now I'm dropping the motor and then lifting it up to make my cut. That allows me to stay right on the edge of the fillet. Back my thumb up, come right to that fillet, right to that relief cut I made, and then make the upper fillet. Fortunately, we got a couple more pieces here to cope. So let's do one of these others and take another look at this. Remember, I'm going to use this at first in the pull position by pulling it right in to where this little overlapping miter is going to be. There's that little overlapping miter right up to the paint line. And then we'll make it another fillet cut right here. This little leaf cut. Rocking that tool all the time. Don't just push the tool. If you just push the tool and you don't rock it, you'll cut too far. Now I'll switch to the push position. Rock the tool back and lift the blade up. Rock the tool, lift it up. Over and over again. We'll take the waste out of this OG a little different way this time. Just work the blade up and wiggle it as we go. We'll get most of the way up there, come back from the top. But we'll get rid of all the waste on the way down. Rock that blade and tip it sideways so you can undercut this. All right. I got one more piece to cope here off of our list. Rocking up into that little overlapping miter. And then rocking up into this first fillet. And then rocking up into the last fillet. Then into the push position. And tipping the blade back a little bit. And angling the blade just a little bit in this direction to undercut that. And undercutting it makes it a little bit easier to follow that paint line too. And then a little ways into this OG. And then I can finish that from the top. There we go. So that's all there is to the copes. I'm using a Craig bench clamp here to hold this material down. I mortise the plate into my Festool NFT table. I find that's a pretty handy way of having a, a coping station for baseboard and it helps for crown molding too. Now we can go and install all these pieces. Oh, but we still have to cut a couple of these on a miter saw because we coped them long. We left them long so we could get them onto the clamp here. So let's go back to the saw, make these last two cuts, and then we can install these pieces. Okay, here's the first one. It was seven and nine sixteenths to a butt cut. So we'll pull the saw over. I'm gonna turn on the laser again so I can put that laser right on the mark and make my cut. And here's the second one. Remember, this one had an outside corner on the left end, and it's cut at 43 degrees. So I'll bring, I'll bring the saw over right to 43, lock it down so it won't move, and bring that laser line right to the mark. A little bit more. 
There we go. There's our last piece. Having that cut list makes it a lot easier. And using the right tools makes it easier too. Now, we can go install all those pieces. Read the rest of this article and you'll see the installation techniques too.